Hello and welcome back to my channel. For this card, I am using several Lawn Fawn products, starting with Germ Free Bear, Party Koala, Beam Me Up, Costume Party, Holiday Helpers, Hey There. And that was all the stamp sets. I am using Jellyfish ink to stamp them in because I am going to alter these stamps. So for the koala, this was like a birthday freebie they had. I don't remember what year. I'm going to turn this one into stitch. This was actually my husband's suggestion when I was trying to sit down and figure out which movie I wanted to base this card off of. Since the challenge is in the theme of a movie, a book, or a song. Now here, I'm just doing a kind of loose sketch of what I want each character to look like. I will go over it with a fine liner later to solidify whatever lines I want. I will say this one was not quite as cute as my original sketch, unfortunately. Um, I did have to play with that off camera a little bit because I know my face was just a couple inches away from the paper probably. I was really concentrating on it. <laughs> um, Jumba is going to be just a head. I had to edit this or alter this stamp a lot so it doesn't really look like there was ever a bear under it. Now the same with Pleakley. He was from Beam Me Up and he's just going to be ahead. He was pretty easy to do. And the beam got turned into a surfboard. And then I have Lilo and I didn't really have any good just basic girl stamps from Lawn Fawn for her. So I used the witch stamp set and I switched the dress, changed the hair. I am going to have to change her hair a little bit more later though because she's got way more hair on top of her head than the cartoon looks like. For Scrump, this was a bear from Holiday Helpers and I have slapped the bow on top of it and then added all the other little features. Alright, so here's me lining everything with a Copic Safe fine liner. This is always the stressful part because if you mess up, you can't erase it. Once I have lined everything and it, the ink is dry, I can go over it with an eraser and get rid of all the unwanted lines. I didn't show the colors here because I don't actually remember why, but I kind of stuck with that after a while. I just picked colors that looked fairly close to what reference pictures online look like. And I also have the DVD of Lilo and Stitch. I will say that a lot of the Stitch toys have a brighter blue for the light blue than in the movie. But I kind of like the bright blue one, so I went with bright blue. And then I skipped coloring everything else. So we're going to jump straight into the card. So I have the Build a House and the Build a House add-on spring set, I think that was. And I have cut out three of the house pieces. I am going to ink them with Squeezed Lemonade Distress Oxide. So I've got three of those. I'm going to bring in all the roof pieces and I'm going to distress ink those up with abandoned coral. And if you don't know what I'm making yet, this is Lilo's house before it gets destroyed. And then the final color I'm gonna bring in is peacock feathers, although I did forget that I needed to ink up the door. I'm going to ink that up with the abandoned coral after I've taped off the edges. And then I'm going to reverse it. I'm gonna tape up the door and then I'm going to ink around the door frame with the peacock feathers. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you're wondering where the little spring add-on set comes in, that would be with the little fences. I have die cut several of those, inked them with peacock feathers, and then I'm just cutting the little spiky bits off the top because it'll be railing and not a fence. Also for two of the main house pieces, I'm just gonna cut the tops off and these will be the left and right sides of the house. Now her house has the vertical, I don't know if this would be like shiplap or what that is. It's just vertical lines across the house. So I'm recreating that look just with my scoreboard. Next, I decided to add some vellum behind my windows. And then I'm gonna cut out some pieces for the platform pop-up die set. I did decide that I wanted a wavy front though, so I've cut out some additional pieces of roughly the same width using the stitched wave borders, and I will cut them to make sort of a band to go around the whole thing. But I have two of those. I'm also using the little, what's supposed to be clouds from the platform pop-up cloud add-on. And I have a grass piece and then just like a regular hill that I'm going to turn into sand. So to start with for the waves, I'm going to ink these with Salty Ocean and Prize Ribbon. And I'm gonna keep the lighter color at the top and the darker color at the bottom. For my sand, I'm using Antique Linen Distress Oxide. And then once that's fully inked up, I'm going to take brushed corduroy and I'm going to add a little bit of watered down brushed corduroy as splatters across the panel. This will just help give it a sandy texture. Well, look, not texture. Still feels the same as the rest. <laughs> and then for the little cloudy bit, I am going to turn that into like a bush. And then of course the grass, I have mowed lawn and rustic wilderness. So I'm gonna treat these slightly different. I am tapping the rustic wilderness over the little bush piece just to give it sort of a different texture. And then for the grass, I'm gonna do some splatters. So I decided to add a little bit of interest to the outside panels and I just spritz them with clean water to add what look like bubbles or something. The insides, I am inking these up a little bit just because you're gonna see a good chunk of this. So whatever parts was gonna be by grass, I made green. I'm also constructing this kind of in the middle of this. I'm gonna ink up some of these too. Some of it will be seen, some of it won't. This part was me just winging it the whole process. I know how to put together the platform pop-up die set pretty well. Adding the panels, that was a little bit of a challenge only because I wasn't sure how to do the sides. I don't know. It was weird. One side doesn't look quite the same as the other. It still looks fine though. And then also adding these little house pieces, that was kind of a challenge. So. I kind of just struggled through this. Oh, and then these side pieces to the house, it's what it looked like on some of the reference pictures. It had like a little bluishy, bluishy green colored strip down the sides. So I decided to add that.
I will say adding the house was fun. I don't <laughs> really know why. I enjoyed that part quite a bit. It was a little bit annoying trying to get these little rails in here. And I would not have added them had I not felt like that was an important detail to really make it look like Lilo's house. Now here's where I really had to be careful about where I placed everything because things aren't exactly scaled to proper size. So you have Stitch and he's quite large. So I put him in the front partially just to make it look like he's larger because he's in the front. And, oh, as you can see here, I had already cut some of Lilo's hair. But also another challenge is to get them staggered enough that if you turn the card just slightly, you can see different elements at different points. So I'm going to have Pleakley and Jumba in the back hiding behind the bushes. I'm going to have Stitch and the surfboard in the front, and then Lilo with Scrump right in the middle. After all my little characters are in, I'm going to add the word Ohana on the front using Henry's ABCs. And for these, I'm just going to color them with some of the reds that I used for Lilo's dress. Now I'm just adding my letters to the front. I am going to have to kind of bend the O and the last A to get it to all fit without being too spaced out. This was mildly annoying, but I got it. Once all that's glued down, my card is complete. So here's a final look at the card. I have Jumba, Pleakley, Scrump, Lilo, Stitch, a surfboard, and the house. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back with another video soon. Bye!